You've got monthly expenses of $365 million. And now this pledge to continue paying employees. Can you explain to shareholders how do you plan to capture a return on that investment? Well, obviously, we're taking a long-term view. Uh, the short-term view is to furlough people and cut costs, and that's doable. Uh, we've chosen, the Adelson family has chosen a different approach, which we built a team here over the last 25 years that's pretty valuable to us and has done a great job and, and stood by us when things weren't so good. So we're now standing by them. But we also believe business-wise, when things do return, we'll have the most, we have 8,000 people work here in Las Vegas for us, and we'll build a team that'll last a long time to come. And when business recovers, we'll be at the, head the class. So you can argue either way. Uh, it's a grand gesture. There's no arguing that. But I think long term, when Las Vegas is uh, back on its feet, it will come back. Uh, we'll be in a very, very nice position to uh, take advantage of the, uh, the environment. Is it a gauntlet thrown down? Is it a challenge issued to other companies by Las Vegas Sands and by Sheldon Adelson? Uh, no, I don't see it that way. I think the Adelsons, both uh, Miriam and Sheldon, just believe that supporting people in these difficult times is the right thing to do from a, a moral perspective. At a time when this city is really having some uh, incredible challenges, they're doing the right thing. But also business-wise, we believe uh, this pandemic will eventually go away and we'll be at the head of the class in terms of uh, desirability, both for customers and also for employees. So what has been a very challenging market to get great employees, we have great employees, lots of them, and we plan to stand behind them. And we believe long-term will pay off from a, both a, an ethical, but also from a business perspective. Back in studio, Kelly. thank you again for joining us. I am curious about the importance of Sheldon Adelson to this company in the long term. You know, he was absent from a few earnings calls last year uh, with some health issues. Um, what can you tell us today about his tenure and any succession plans? I'll tell you, as strong as could be, he's doing great. He spoke this morning. Uh, he's full of energy. He's anxious to get back to work. He's frustrated by uh, the downtime. We usually are in Asia once a month. Uh, he travels incessantly, and him and his wife are anxious to get back to uh, the good old day, pre-COVID days. So um, I think he's in a great place uh, mentally and physically, and uh, he's going to be 87 years old. I think it's uh, wow. August 4th, but you wouldn't know it. <laughs> he's very vibrant. He's very alert, very sharp, and he's feisty, and he's anxious to get back to, uh, uh, to Asia <laughs> and to the U.S. and get back on his airplane. So he's kind of frustrated, like many people, about the inability to travel and do things. But that's the environment but we live in. We accept it. There's not much like a socially distanced party for your 84th birthday or 87th birthday. Uh, Rob, I wanted to ask you, we, we got an announcement from uh, the Consumer Electronics Show, one of Las Vegas's right. biggest shows. It right. lifts all boats there on the Strip, and they're going all digital in January 2021. I know that was a blow to Las Vegas. Give me yes. a sense of what it takes to get that convention business back. Well, first of all, you have to realize Las Vegas has morphed into a convention. It's, it's a large scale uh, city by any, any means you measure it. Uh, 150,000 sleeping rooms, uh, large conventions, large banquets. Uh, large is the word for Las Vegas. So not exactly an easy place to be in this environment. CES is the, is the, you know, the best of the best as far as Las Vegas shows go. Uh, it's not a good uh, thing for the city. It's hurtful short term. Um, but we have an airlift problem as well. So think about where Vegas is at. It needs to fill all these rooms all the time at high rates. CES and shows like it drive that business, drive that segment. We can't be a regional driving destination for California. The airlift is 40% uh, it was pre-COVID. So CES just, uh, it's clearly a difficult time for us. And the question is what does change it? And from my perspective, we're in for some more pain around here because uh, you've got the scale issue, it's large. You've got the airlift issue. The consumer's concerned about being on an airplane or coming to a place like Las Vegas. So it's a challenge. Yeah. What changed it probably is a, either a, a vaccine or immunity or something that changes the, the consumer perception of this virus. And I don't see that happening short term. Okay. 20 is over. And so we have to think about that. 